All right, we are officially live, I think, here on a uh, Friday morning, and it is uh, January 22nd, uh, the time that we are doing this live. If you're watching this later, well, welcome, and uh, happy whatever day it is for you. But it's Friday here, and we are going to do our Friday jam session. Yes, that's what we do every single Friday. Actually, Monday and Wednesday, we're here at 10 a.m. Eastern time, and Friday we are as well. But Friday, we really try to pick a topic or a question that is asked that we can answer. And today, we're going to be answering this question and really digging into it. And that is, how many digital products and offers should I have in my brand? All right. Now, this is a question that comes up quite often. It also gets tempting once you learn how to create your digital product. And we all fall into that trap. We think more offers, more offers, more offers, you know, more products, more products, more products. And sometimes that actually hurts you because you don't actually put the effort in to not just creating the product, but then promoting the product. Uh, a lot of times we get the product created and then we don't promote it. And we wonder why it's not getting any traction. We need to give it a little love. We need to give it a little bit of attention, just like anything. Um, so we're going to talk about that. I'm going to dig into it. I actually have some notes here. And uh, really, I'm going to go through exactly what I would do. It's exactly what I am currently doing. And I will give you a real example of my business um, here uh, with what I'm doing here in Brand Creators and also some of the other brands that I am building. Uh, and it's really the principles that I've always kind of followed. Now, I have fallen into the trap of wanting to create more offers, more offers, more offers. And uh, I've also seen uh, more chaos in the brand, more confusion. Uh, customers are confused. Um, and then also wondering why it's not doing as well as I had hoped. All right. So that's what we're going to be talking about here today is uh, how many digital products and offers should I have? We're going to talk a little bit also about pricing on those. Um, so we will dig into that. Uh, the other thing is real quick, um, I didn't bring it up, but, uh, last, I was going to say last week, this week, it was, it was two, two days ago, uh, our niche finder fast track workshop. It was amazing. And, uh, it was awesome. And we had a pretty good crowd show up. Uh, we had a lot more people that also had, uh, registered, but didn't show up because, well, they just couldn't make it. Um, so if you did attend the niche finder fast track workshop, the recordings and the downloads are now accessible. You can log into the learning area and, um, just log in and it will be there for you. Everything is uh, uploaded and, uh, it came out really, really good. Um, what we're doing for anyone that already attended, what we're going to do is we are going to do a, um, another live session. We're not going to do the entire workshop again because we don't really need to. What we want to do though, is do another live drill down with some different niches. So we're going to go find some new niches. I've already got a few in mind. And then from there, we're going to do another live drill down probably for about an hour, hour and a half. So that will be happening most likely this coming Wednesday. And if you already did register, we will be notifying you through email. So make sure you keep an eye on your inbox. All right. And, um, I should probably throw that up there real quick too. If you're interested in uh, joining us for that, just head on over to uh, brandcreators.com forward slash NFW dash enroll. All right. Um, NFW dash enroll or hyphen, whatever you want to say. And uh, you can do that. You can enroll. And once you enroll now, you're going to be immediately sent to the learning portal where you can start going through that workshop. And then next Wednesday, depending on when you're listening to this, we are, we're going to be doing another live drill down session, um, which is always fun. So let's see what do we got here in the house here on this Friday morning. Let's see here. We got Karen in the house. What's up, Karen? Good morning and happy Friday to you. Salma, what is up? Good to see you as always. I know you were on the workshop and you had some kind words to say. So Salma, thank you for that. Jana, good morning. Uh, Ruth, what is up? How are you guys doing over there uh, in uh, Asheville? How's the weather over there? I think it's nice. Alapandro, what's up? <laughs> good morning, Professor. <laughs> I love this guy. Uh, this is great. Uh, Kay, what's up? Good morning and coffee crew. Yes, I am here with the coffee. So there we are. It is official now. My first sip. Well, 
or the coffee talk. I've already had a cup of coffee. Uh, what's up? Uh, good morning, Scott. Uh, another John D in Tampa. What's up? What's up, John D? How's it going? Glad, glad to see you here. Uh, who else we got here? Kate, what's up? Good morning, crew. Good morning. Good morning. So yeah, if you guys are watching this later or, uh, you know, maybe even, uh, you know, a few hours later, a couple days later, whatever, if you want to join us on these Friday coffee talks, I also record these for the podcast. So this will be a recording. We haven't officially started yet, but if you want to jump in and become part of our official coffee crew, take action crew, uh, head on over to takeactioncrew.com. You have a very simple page there. You can join for free. And then also you will get access to a really cool player there that you can search through all of the past coffee talks. And literally you can put in whatever you're looking for. And the, even the smallest thing that you're looking for, the one little thing, and it will bring up every single instance that we mentioned that in a coffee talk. So it's really, really cool. And it's free for you that are our coffee talk crew or our take action crew, I should say. What's up, Lydia? Good morning. Uh, <laughs> Kate says, I bought my husband a frother. Very good for coffee. It is good. But you know what I've noticed? I, I drink Bulletproof, so I put butter in my coffee. That's all I put in it. I have Bulletproof coffee um, every single day. Um, and the frother doesn't do it for me. I have a frother. My wife uses the frother sometimes for tea or even just if she wants to have a light little whip. My daughter uses the frother. I do not. I don't get the same froth as I do in my Vitamix. So my Vitamix, I just blend that thing right up and man, I get that thing high. And then I have this nice frothy little uh, foam at the top. So if you have a blender, try that out. Works pretty good. All right. So, all right, cool. So here's what we're going to do. Like I said, if you guys are just joining me today on the coffee talk, we are going to be talking about how many digital products and offers should I have? So that is what the jam session is going to be about. We are going to kick it off here uh, very, very soon. I've got a, uh, I've got a, a, cool, a couple of points here and a couple of cool things that I want to share with you. I think it's going to bring clarity to you. I just wrote an email about this. You guys might've received it. And uh, I was talking about, there's two things that I focus on. It's traffic and offers. All right. That's it. Like offers lead to money. Offers are paid products. Okay. So traffic and offers. Um, and that's really what we need to do in business. We need to get eyeballs and we need to have offers. We don't have offers. We don't have money, right? Like, so we have to figure that part out and that's what we heavily focus on. So with that all being said, if you have any questions and also guys, do me a quick favor. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. I had a problem with my mic yesterday. G give me a thumbs up or something if, um, just let me know that my mic is coming through okay. My video is coming through okay. My glasses aren't glaring too much. My brand new glasses. I'm getting used to them, guys. I am getting used to them. Weird, but um, I'm getting used to them. Now, I don't wear them all the time. I've been wearing them about probably about 80% of the time. Um, but if I'm out doing some yard work or something, I'm not wearing them. Uh, I don't really, I don't really need them outside. I don't think, I mean, I probably could see better, but I still feel like I'm looking through glass anyway, let's move on. So, uh, I just want to make sure that I'm coming through clear. I got a thumbs up. Cool. Okay, good. All right, let's get rocking and rolling. Here we go. All right, here we go. You guys know how it goes. Here we go. All right. Welcome back to this Friday jam session where we're going to be talking about something that is super important, something that gets asked about quite a bit, but also is something that can drive your business. And I mean, drive it to sales. And that is how many digital products and offers should I have in my brand? It's a great question because we think more means that we're going to get more, right? Like we're going to create more. So that means we're going to get more. Not always the case. Sometimes what happens is, is we create something and then we don't give it enough love. Same thing goes with a piece of content. If you create a piece of content and you're just creating content and content and content, and that's great and all, but if you do not take a little bit of time to give it a little bit of love, and what I mean by that is, is push it a little bit, amplify it. Okay. And again, not all content you might not want to amplify the same thing with a product. If you create a product, this product's main goal is to help someone, but is for you to also bring revenue back into the business. Okay. 
But a lot of times people think, okay, I'm going to go ahead and create 10 different uh, products. And when I talk about offers, offers don't necessarily mean it's got to be a product specific. Now, let me kind of clarify that. If you have three products right now and you sell each one on their own, that's an offer. Okay. If you take two of those and create a bundle, that's an offer. If you create three of them in a bundle, that's an offer, right? So we can create multiple offers, even if we only have two or three different products. Okay. But what I want to really talk about here today, and if you are, if you're right now thinking about creating more digital products, or maybe you're just thinking about getting started with digital products, I want you to just really take the time to watch this, listen to this, wherever you are, if you're on podcast, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, whatever, I really want you to listen to what I have to say. Cause I think this is going to help you. Okay. Because a lot of people, they make it harder than it really needs to be. Now, before I do jump in, let me ask you, if you can do me a favor, wherever you are, whatever platform, if you're on a podcast, you can probably just head on over to uh, uh, Facebook or YouTube and, and leave it there. Um, or just email me Scott at brandcreators.com. But I am curious, do you currently right now have a digital product created? And you can just say yes or no, and just let me know. I just want to know where you are. If you do have a digital product or multiple digital products, um, let me know how many you have currently. I'm just curious. I kind of want to get a feel for the room right now. So let me know by go ahead and dropping that in the comments. All right. So let's jump in. All right. If you are starting right now with nothing, okay, let's start, let, let's start there. And then we'll, we'll talk about someone that already has existing product or products. Um, so if we're just starting from scratch, what you really want to do is you want to get laser focused on what is that one thing, that one problem, that one solution, maybe that one thing that you're going to help someone achieve. Now, it doesn't necessarily always have to be a problem. I have to always make sure that I'm clear about this. If you're teaching someone how to play guitar, it's not teaching them how to play the entire song. It's teaching them how to play the first, the first, uh, you know, bar, right? Or the first riff, if it's a guitar riff, right? You need to break it down. So maybe you're just going to teach someone how to play the song, but it's going to be broken down into these little chunks. And that's the product. And it's really about how to learn these certain chords. You can play multiple songs. Okay. But your, your product really needs to solve that one problem or that one desired outcome that someone is trying to achieve. So just really make sure that it does that. What I see a lot of people doing is creating this massive either course or massive ebook, and they, they want to try to cover everything. And then what happens is it doesn't speak directly to that one person that needs that thing. Okay. So a perfect example is we have our email list building fast track workshop that is specifically designed to help someone build their list from scratch following three different uh, basically components. Okay. One of them is come up with the idea, create a landing page and then get traffic. Right. So it's kind of like create your idea or get your idea you know, for, for your lead magnet. You're going to attract these people. Then from there we need to create it, but that's kind of in the idea creation stage. Then from there, we got to build a landing page that people can come there and enter their name and email address. And then from there we got to get traffic. So that's it. That's all we're going to talk about. We're not going to do a ton of follow-up. We can do a little bit, but we don't have to do too much. We got to get that done. And someone that is looking to get that done, they don't want to know all of the other things yet, right? So the same thing goes for you. If you're going to teach someone how to fly fish, just teach them one aspect of fly fishing and it speaks directly to them. So that's first and foremost, okay? So once you have this thing now, okay, once you have this digital asset, okay, you want to make sure that you go through the process of building it out, okay, and bringing attention to it, all right? So let me kind of walk through this. Let's say that you start with one simple product. And the other thing I want to really make sure that I'm clear about is when you, when you create your products, especially in the beginning, make them simple. Do not spend weeks trying to create this thing. The easiest way to do this, there's a couple different ways, but the easiest way to me is to create an ebook. 
right? And if you create an ebook, you can do so many things with the ebook. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. But if you create an ebook, number one, you can sell the thing between $9.99 to $19.99. All right. And then from there, it also gives you someone that's raised their hand with their wallet. Okay. But now, okay, now that we we create this simple product that we don't spend months creating, and actually inside of our uh, digital product creation workshop, I show you exactly how to do this, how to outline it, how to put it all together. If you're interested in checking that out, you can head over to brandcreators.com forward slash digital, uh, and you can access that workshop. It's a two and a half hour workshop, and by the end of it, you will know how to create your digital product, and you'll have it basically created, all right? But the, the bottom line is, is you have to create this thing, right? Create this thing, MVP, minimum viable product. You guys heard me talk about that before. And so what we want to do is get that product created, okay? And we're happy with it, all right? Now, what's next, okay? Well, we have to have a sales process or also known as a funnel, okay? A sales process, funnel, same thing, okay? Just everyone's using the word funnel these days. So what we want to do here is we need some, we need some components here. We, we need to build this, this machine, okay? So once we have our product, we got to put it somewhere so people can pay for it, but also where we can let them know that this product speaks directly to them. It's also what we call a sales page, okay? Now, this doesn't have to be a massive sales page. It literally can be a, a, an order form with a little you know, bullet point list of what they're going to, to receive. It does not have to be this massive sales page, you know, these 10 page sales pages. We don't need that. Does that work in some industries? Yes. If you're selling something a little bit more expensive, yes, um, it can come in handy. We don't need that right now. So our next thing is, okay, we got to build out a sales page. Okay. So we build out a sales page and there's multiple tools we can use. We can use convert kit. We can use Gumroad. Uh, there's, you know, there's is free, uh, convert kit is also within, um, your, your plan, depending on what plan, I think it's even on the beginner's plan. Um, and you, you can offer products they'll do all the payments, all that stuff. So they make, they make it so easy to do nowadays. Okay. But we got to get that thing created. All right, because we need a place for people to put their credit card to buy it, but we also need to explain about it. Okay. So that's that, that piece. Now, the next piece of that is we need a delivery system. We need to be able to deliver that product to those people as we promised. Okay. And a very simple way to do that is if you use Gumroad, they're going to give you that. They're going to give you that thank you page or the delivery page. All right. If you're going to use ConvertKit, same thing. They will host it. They will deliver it. So the mechanics are really, really simple, but we do need to get this in place. Okay. So we need a, a sales process. Okay. And that is, like I said, a funnel, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Now, once we get this thing in place, what do we need next? Traffic, right? We need to promote it. So how do we do that? Well, there's multiple different ways. I, I did a coffee talk not that long ago, five different ways, but I'll just kind of throw some out here that come right to mind. Number one, if you have an email list, you want to promote it through your email list. Now, I don't mean sending out one email, all right? I mean, actually do a full-fledged promotion. Now, I'm not going to go into all of that here today because today isn't about how to promote that product, okay? But I'm going through this because I want you to understand that this here and all needs to be done before you would ever consider building out another product, okay? And we'll talk about that here in a second, okay? So what you want to do is, number one, you want to promote it to your email list, and I mean a promotion, okay? Like, let them know that there's something for sale, and then send follow-ups, give them a deadline of when the price is going to be valid to, or the bonuses are going to go away, any of that stuff. Okay. But you need to have some type of deadline. You need to have some type of promotion. Okay. That's email. If you have email, okay. Website. If you have a website with visitors and I don't care if it's a hundred visitors a month, you got visitors. Okay. You got to put it on your website. You can use something in convert kit that has a pop-up feature that can come on your website. You can use hello bar. I think there's is free up to a certain number of visitors. So the mechanics or the tools are not hard anymore. We got to put it on our website, put it on your sidebar of your, of your website, or maybe even create a post all about it and put it on your website. 
We need it to be available. If we do not let people know, they can't buy, right? So that's your website. If you have a Facebook uh, business page, which everyone should have a business page, not just because you want likes and because you want people there to see your stuff. When you start to run Facebook ads, which you will eventually, you're going to need a business page, also known as a fan page, as they used to call it, okay? So you need that. So put it on your, your uh, business page, okay? If you have YouTube, create a YouTube video about it, okay? Uh, if you have Pinterest, create some pins about it, okay? So there's a lot that can be done here, but what happens is, is people create the product, yes, thumbs up. They, uh, they, they create their sales process. Great. And then they promote it a little bit and then they're like, okay, good. I'm going to let that go. I'm going to move on to the next thing. No, we don't want to do that. We need to focus on creating this machine really. Okay. And so we can have this sales machine working for us 24 seven. If, if this is, let's just say that this is where we're at right now. We've got everything that I just said. And let's say that you do have your email list. Maybe what you need to do is build a lead magnet that is going to be related to your product. And then from there on the thank you page, you're going to offer this product. Okay. So lead magnet is free. You can advertise that, put it everywhere. I just said as well. And then someone will enter that by, by putting in their email address. They'll immediately be taken to a thank you page. We immediately make them an offer. And then if they take the offer, great. If not, we can follow up with them with an automated sequence. And maybe that'll run for four or five days with a promotion built in. You see what we're doing here? There's all of these things that can be done before we ever move on to another product. And before I would move on to another product, by the way, what I would do is I would create another digital asset that I would use as an order bump. And if you don't know what an order bump is, it's basically, and you've probably seen this, even if you're at the store, you're at the store and you see gum or they say, Hey, uh, you know, can I offer you an apple pie? You know, at McDonald's, you know, years ago it was like, you know, would you like an apple pie with that? That that's a bump. Okay. Um, if you're online and you're going through the checkout, they have suggestions. If you ever bought hosting or, or a website, or you went to Vistaprint or any of those, you're going to see, you want to add business cards, want to add pens. Those are bumps. You're already in that buying cycle. It's more likely for you to be able to buy more stuff if you're in that buying cycle or in that, in that, uh, you know, in that atmosphere, right? And your credit card's already in. Okay. So I, before I would do another digital product, I'd do a bump, right? But now in order for people to see the bump, I got to get sales. How do I get sales? I work on promoting it, right? So all of these things, once they're built out, then it's just a matter of, we got to feed more traffic into the machine. Okay. So you kind of gathered by now, I don't think you should create a whole bunch of products out of the gate. I think that there will keep you busy for a little while. Now, the one thing I would say is if you did not do your validation on your product first, okay? And what I mean by that is if you created like an MVP product, like I say, like, like something that you're just testing the market, you didn't spend a ton of time putting it together, but you're just testing the market to see if people will buy it. And if they do, then you can build everything out and spend a whole bunch of time promoting it and all that stuff. If you've done a beta launch and it doesn't do that well, then maybe you need to scrap that idea and find another product that resonates with your audience. Okay. And again, the way that you do that is you build your email list. You can survey your list, say, Hey, there, here's three things I'm, I'm going to be creating in the future. Which one do you want me to do first? What are your biggest sticking points? These types of things are going to help you decide if you're going to even create that digital product. Okay. So when it comes to creating more products, I would slow down and focus on this right here. Now, one thing that just came to mind, and I know some people are going to be thinking, well, Scott, what would I create as an order bump, you know, as you know, my second purchase, a very simple thing to do with an ebook is an audio book. And you can literally either get someone to read it or you can read it yourself. Now, I literally just, I'm, I'm actually playing with this. Uh, I'm testing something right now. I'm playing with this idea of taking blog posts in this other brand that I'm building. I already, I already started this process. For $25, I have someone that is reading this post word for word, okay? And it's 
it's uh let's see here it's probably around 2500 words okay and it turns out that it's about a 10 to a 12 minute video okay from just that one post okay it cost me $25 let's say that your book was four blog posts it would cost you $100 to get someone to read and it would actually be probably less because this person's doing video for me it could just be audio okay so for a hundred bucks to add an order bump into that sequence that some are going to take it, some aren't, some want both, some want an audio book, some want a, a physical or a, um, a digital copy. Uh, and so that's a great way to offer a bump really simple to do. All right. So again, I am going to say this right now. If you are currently building a digital product or thinking about creating a digital product, first thing is you want to make sure that you test the idea with your list or with people in your market by just asking. And then from there, probably even putting out a really, really simple uh, order form and just asking them to put their credit card in and buy a pre-copy. That's the best way to probably do this. Okay. And then from there, you can move on to all of those other things. Okay. Because we do not want to build something that people don't want. All right. So once you get that done, then it would be like, okay, this thing's up and running. It's starting to produce some sales. It seems like it's it's running pretty smooth, all right? And you feel like you've already kind of exhausted your, uh, you know, your traffic and stuff. Then, okay, move on. Add another product. But again, another specific product that addresses another problem or desire, but also links to the first product. Because now if someone buys the first product, we could bump but then we can also offer them the second product or we can have someone go from the second product and refer them to the first product. You, you get where this is going, right? We can create this little ecosystem of all of our products that kind of, they kind of link to each other. Okay. And then we could have a massive bundle if we wanted to one day. All right. But I would start with one. And as far as pricing goes, some people want to know, like, what do you charge? In the very beginning, I think it's going to be easier for you to do something like this. It's going to take the pressure off of you. You're going to get more people to raise their hand without a ton of proof or testimonials or any of that stuff. You don't have to do a lot of convincing something that's $20 or less. Okay. It's just going to make your job a lot easier. And then once you get through this process and you learn this process, then you can do another one. And if you want to go to a higher ticket price, if you want to do a workshop and you want to charge 37 bucks, a hundred bucks, then you can, Right. But we, we, we want to start here so we can get going, so we can get moving and we can understand this process and you have less resistance to the market, all right? So I would start with one. I would start under $20 or less. I would create a bump and I would focus on promoting that thing in all different aspects. So that's what I would do, all right? And if I was you, I would consider doing that. All right, guys. So that is this jam session. So let me see if you guys have any questions and hopefully that was clear. Hopefully you guys got value. So let's go ahead and see what we got here. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, Salomon, not yet. Uh, uh, Benet says no. Uh, Karen, it's almost done. Awesome. Yes. One digital product. Awesome. K. Uh, four digital products and several smaller ones. Okay. I'd like to hear more about that. Who is that, by the way? I can't see uh, the Facebook user here, uh, but if you can let me know who that is, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, let's see here. Ruth, my digital product is in the process. I'm about 70% done with it. Uh, okay. And Ruth, again, you, you know, I'm, I'm big on this and I'm going to, I'm going to get on you about this. 70% uh, done. That's great. What's, what's, what's the 30%? Are we trying to make it perfect? Can we get it done quicker? Can we get it out there? Can we sample the market? Can we test the market without making it perfect? Again, maybe maybe it is on its way. Um, I just want to make sure that we're not going to try to hover over this thing for a while. I want to get it out there and let's get this thing tested. Uh, let's see, website, some content just getting out the gate. However, no digital product yet. That's okay. If you're creating content on your website, I got good news for you you probably are going to be sitting on a digital product. I have two di digital products that we just created from two of the brands that we're working on inside the academy. Each of those were created from blog content and they're 190 plus pages, okay? 
And I paid someone to do these for me, to take all that content, compile it, make it look pretty and stuff. And now we have these digital assets that we're going to be able to sell between $9.99 and $19.99. All right. So um, yeah, you could be sitting on your digital product. All right. Uh, let's see. How do you come up with a lead magnet when you are not sure about your offer because you have no list yet to confirm it with? Then Salomon, you might want to start with the lead magnet. The lead magnet tests the idea really quick, right? So the cool thing about that is we're able to put a lead magnet out there relatively quick, okay? And then from there, we can even run ads to it and see how it's converting there. And then we can say, okay, now let's go ahead and bolt something on the back of it, okay? So I see a lot of people struggling with this if they don't have a list, right? And the easy solution is create the lead magnet or two lead magnets if you want to, run ads to those two lead magnets, see how they convert, Whichever one converts higher is going to probably be the one that you're going to then build out as more information, right? So one could be a checklist and then the other one could be the guide, right? So just think about it like that. We have, uh, you know, I, I'll give you an example. Uh, one of our uh, Academy members, Matt, created a very simple checklist for maintenance on your mountain bike, okay? Well, that thing converted at like 30 plus percent with ads, built his email list off of that. And then on the back end of that, he built out content on his website all about maintaining your bike. And then he turned that into a guide and he sold over, I believe, 30 copies uh, within a week from doing that. So that's how it works. You lead magnet, sample, get, get, some, get some data, start building a list, and then you sell them deeper of what they just signed up for. And then eventually you can make the lead magnet, the lead in, and then you can then uh, you know, bring them into a thank you page, which would make the offer. So that's what I would technically do there. Uh, what software or hosting do you need to have an audio book? An audio book is just an MP3 file. You don't need anything. Basically just whoever you're going to have do it, or if you're going to do it yourself, I mean, you, heck you could do it on your phone. You know, uh, you can do it on your phone and read it or have someone read it. Or like I said, go to Fiverr, have someone do it for you for like 25 bucks and they'll send you a file. On that file, it's just going to be another digital upload that you're going to upload to your server. Gumroad offers it, uh, ConvertKit. You just upload it. When they purchase, they're going to have two little links there. One's for the book, one's for the audio. Boom, boom, done. It's literally that simple. Uh, who do you recommend for ebook software or creation? Uh, so ebook e software, I think what, with what you're saying, Kate, is um, how to compile the book. Is that what you're saying? Like how to put it all together? Uh, I think that's what you're saying. If you are, there's a tool out there um, called Designer with two R's, um, kind of like Fiverr. Um, and uh, it's a really good software, really good tool. Um, you still have to play with it. You still have to you know, go in there and, and add some components or, or restructure uh, some things, but it gets you about 80% of the way there. Um, if you want it totally hands-off, then just pay someone over on Fiverr, free up, Upwork, any of those to do it. Um, the books that I'm talking about, I paid right around $250 per, uh, ebook. Um, now I'm getting a deal in my eyes. Um, she's actually in our Academy as well. Um, and she actually was a transcriptionist, I believe. And then a, uh, a, uh, an editor. Um, and then she reached out to me, got about a year and a half, maybe three years ago. And, uh, I mean, she's actually the one that helped me compile all this and my other books that I've done. Um, but uh, typically, you're going to spend $250, $450, depending on how big the book will be um, for really good quality. Now, you could get someone to do it cheaper, but if you did it on designer and then you wanted to hand it off to someone on Fiverr, you could probably pay less and have them just clean it up and edit it. Uh, let's see here. Okay, had another question. You mentioned Gumroad and ConvertKit together. Do you use both? No. You would use, um, if you were going to use ConvertKit for the sales page, then you're just going to use ConvertKit. Um, if you're going to use Gumroad, that's a separate, it's a separate tool. It's free. Um, they do charge you per transaction, which is no big deal. Um, and it's really cool. It's kind of slick. Um, and I've used them for years on various projects. Um, but yeah, so what you would do though, is you would build your sales page on Gumroad and then you would drive traffic to that or embed um, the link to that on your website or your email, and you would just drive traffic over there. 
Um, and there's some, some actually inside of our digital product creation fast track workshop, we actually show you in Gumroad also how you can kind of do an order bump in convert kit. You can't, um, you'd have to go to another tool. Uh, there's like Sam car, Kajabi click funnels. I wouldn't go there yet. Gumroad, you can create separate products that are shown. And so what you would do is you would say, okay, ebook is nine 99 ebook plus audio book, 1999. And you would have two options. And then they can click on that to add it to their cart. Um, that that's Gumroad. Uh, do you think everyone should write a book to gain authority in their market? It doesn't hurt. But again, uh, I wouldn't worry about creating the authority yet. I would just work. I would. I'd be more concerned about just creating something that gave them the result that they needed, and then the authority will come. Right. I wouldn't do it just as an authority play. Uh, but whenever you do say, Hey, you know, go check out my book. It does instantly give you some authority in your space. Uh, what are biggest mistakes you have been, have seen people make with their digital products? Pretty much what I just went over. Number one, they overthink it. They overcomplicate it. And then they spend way too much time building it and then come to find out no one wants it. So that's like one of the biggest mistakes. So it's, it's really like they're not validating the market. And I've done this myself. That's why I know. Okay. So my suggestion is exactly what I said earlier. And that is I would test your idea one of two ways. Uh, if you have a list, I would ask them, right? Here's what I'm going to be creating. Uh, is this something that you'd be interested in or give them choices, right? And let them vote that way and then let them know that something's coming and then let them help you build it. And then you build up this desire for the product. Okay. If you don't have a list, then what I would do is I would start with a lead magnet that basically gives them some help in that area that you're going to be eventually building the ebook or the ultimate guide. I like to call them the ultimate guides. Okay. So again, checklist. Okay. Maybe if you're helping someone with keto, you're going to probably give them a grocery list right? And then they can download that. When people download it, you know that they're interested in keto diet because they're downloading this checklist. Well, if they also are downloading that, you can probably sell them something like the ultimate guide to keto, you know, without starving yourself, that could be the ultimate guide that you would sell for $9.99, right? And then that would lead into more things. That's how I would do it. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see people making is they, they guess, a lot of guessing. I think my market wants this. I think, I think, no, we want to know. So we either test it with our, with our list and we do even pre-sales. We go, guys, I'm thinking about creating this thing. I'll do it. If I get 10 of you to basically, you know, purchase in advance, do a pre-order, right? If you don't have a list, we got to build a list. Then you test it with the lead magnet. That's what I would do to test and validate really quick. All right. Really, really quick. Uh, Alpandro, did you find your audio reader in person to compile blog posts through Fiverr? Yeah. The interesting thing is, is, uh, Alpandro, I've been looking at people to do this for a long time. And there's, there's a, a, a digital, it's a digital voice a lot of times. And it sounds like this, that I'm reading this. And if you want to catch bass more, you need to use a silver lure. You've, you've probably heard that before, right? Well, now they're getting a lot better. And I've got this one that this guy shared with me of the, the author that's going to be reading it. It's, it's AI. It's basically, it's, it's a computer generated. It sounds real. Um, so it's a lot easier for them now to be able to do this. Um, and I'm really happy with it. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be converting our blog posts, some of them, some of the bigger ones, and we're going to um, put them into video so we can put them up on YouTube and we're going to test that. Um, and it's going to cost me 25 bucks a video. I'm happy with that. Uh, Salamis says sip. Thank you. I will. All right. So let's see here. Uh, do the number of pages matter in a, in an ebook? No. And that's another misconception. No, I don't care. Do you want to read 195 pages if it's just a bunch of fluff? No. Do you want to read 15 pages? That's going to give you exactly what you need. Yes. I hate books that drag it out, drag it out, drag it out. I'm like, give me the action steps. I want to know. You've convinced me. I bought the book. I want to do this. I want to know how, right? So usually 
It's the more direct you can get, the better reviews you're going to get as long as you're thorough. If you got to explain things in, in a lot of detail, explain it. Then the book's going to be bigger, right? Don't try to make the book bigger just to be bigger. That, that would be my advice. Karen, so funny this is your topic today. I was going to ask you, you yesterday on the membership call um, about what to use for selling my ebook in the steps. Well, there you go, Karen. Um, Karen, we actually just, I'm going to be sharing this too in BCA. I literally just uh, sold uh, one of our eBooks. It was, it's a brand new eBook. We just had it had it done, just had it finished, came out amazing. Um, and um, I just did a little promotion through our email list for that brand. And uh, we sold 28 uh, in three days. And then uh, we had a problem with ConvertKit. And then from there, we sold another, I think it was six or seven through Gumroad by saying, hey, we made a mistake or we had an error. Now it's fixed. Go get it. So we sold over 30. Um, and I'm going to show you guys inside the Academy exactly uh, what that all looks like. So that's coming, Aaron. Uh, Helene, what's up, Helene? Good to see you. Have uh, a digital guide that is 36 pages that is a lead magnet and then a 165-page guide for sale. My big guide isn't moving at all, but I think I need to go back and work on encouraging the click-through rate on the sequence. What are your thoughts on offering a paid audio version of the free 36 page guide that would be offered at the time of download since the conversion rate for my landing page for the little guide um, is almost 60%. Wow. That's awesome. Helene, we need to look at all this stuff. So I know that you are inside of BCA. Um, we need to look through this whole, this whole process. Um, because if the lead magnet is converting that high, my first question is, do you have the offer on the thank you page? Okay, that's my first question. Um, and if it is, I want to see that thank you page. So if you want to post this stuff in BCA and I can take a look at it, um, I'll do that. Uh, and then the next thing is, is what does the sequence look like? I would like to see the sequence that you are not getting the sales. Because a, a lot of times it's probably going to be with that. And I'm, I'm assuming your open rates are good with that email or those emails, but the, you're, you're saying the clicks aren't. So I want to, I would like to investigate that 60% on your, uh, on your lead magnet though. Come on, Helene. That is amazing, man. That's a great conversion rate. Uh, thoughts on merch print on demand as one of the product offers. I love it. We're actually playing with Etsy right now ourselves, um, with print on demand and it's, it's working really well. We have not used it for like an upsell or anything at this time. Um, but I think it's great. But again, uh, I like digital products. It's just, we can just control it so much easier. Uh, I'm also interested in making some blog posts from uh, my brand site into an audio. I love audio. Yeah. Well, again, Karen, I'm going to be sharing this inside BCA. I'll share the video that I had converted. Um, and I think it was a 1500 or 2000 page blog post and had it turned into a, a video or that new niche that I just, uh, revealed inside the Academy. I'll show you guys because I'm going to actually start playing with uh, YouTube now. I'm going to go ahead and upload these into YouTube and see if we can get some traffic there. Always playing, right? Always playing. But again, it comes down to traffic offers. That's what it comes down to. All right, guys, is that it? Is that all we got here for our jam session? I think we went on a little while there, which is awesome, which is cool. So if you guys are listening to this and you're not here on the jam session, head on over to takeactioncrew.com, become part of our our Take Action Morning Crew, officially, it's free. Um, and uh, we'd love to have you here. And uh, yeah, I will be back here Monday. Uh, and uh, I won't be here though. I will be actually visiting my granddaughter in Virginia. So I will be in Virginia on Monday, but I'll be here. Why will I be here on the Coffee Talk? Because I committed to showing up Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I talk about committing to things on a regular basis. This is a commitment I made. I will be here right? If you commit to writing one email a week to your list, do it, right? Do not skip it. If you, if you commit to working out three days a week, commit, do it, right? We get results by showing up and committing and taking action. All right, Karen, thank you. Awesome. Great coffee talk. Boom. Awesome. Yes, Salma, have a great weekend. And uh, yes, Kate, you have yourself a great one as well. All right, guys, that's it. That's going to wrap it up. As always, take care, take action. And I'll talk to you soon. Have an awesome day, guys. Bye.